In this video, we'll take a look at the all-new graphical user interface available on the second generation of Quick 6, Quick 4, and Quick 2 models. Keep in mind that for this demonstration, the controller won't be connected to a vehicle, so some indications will be different. While the home screen is shown, turn the function knob in either direction to activate the main menu. The highlighted phrase in center is your selection. When you've found the menu item you wish to access, push the knob down to click. Each submenu has an exit option which will return you to the previous menu or home screen. Now let's take a look at the home screen. It shows real-time transmission information such as speed, current commanded gear, transmission temperature, selected calibration table, TCC lock, Prindle position, and any active faults. The calibration table icon is omitted from the Quick 2 since it only has one table. When low range is engaged, LO, L2, or L3 will be shown beside speed. Key off will show in the Prindle location if the ignition is off and the controller is being powered by USB. Error will show in the Prindle location if there is a Prindle sensor error. Fault messages will be shown in the center of the display and will cycle through them if there are multiple errors. While no errors are present, the home screen will automatically switch to enlarged mode for easier visibility. It emits some of the indicators in favor of showing the most critical ones. As you turn the knob and enter the main menu, the next option is the info screen. Clicking this will replace the home screen as the default view showing sensor values such as TPS voltage and percentage, battery voltage, commanded pressure in PSI, and engine RPM. If you want to return to using the home screen, simply turn the knob and click the home screen option so that it becomes default again. In the same way, if you don't want the controller to show anything while in use, click display off. The controller will keep the display off unless you turn the knob to activate the menu. Next, let's look at the setup menu. This menu has all the basic settings needed to get up and running and can vary from one transmission to another. The first option is TPS setup. This is the first thing you should do after installing the controller. We made an in-depth walkthrough video for TPS setup, which can be found by clicking the link in the description below. Speedo out allows configuration of the speedometer output, which is used to drive an electronic speedometer. For a detailed explanation of how to use the speedometer output, refer to the installation manual that came with your controller or look it up on our website, usshift.com, under Support Publications. Next we'll take a look at the Tune menu. This is where you can make adjustments to shift timing, shift feel, and torque converter clutch settings. Under Shift Points, the RPM at which shifts occur can be set, either for all shifts or each individual shift. For Quick 2, you can only adjust all shifts at once. After clicking the shift you want to change, select the throttle percentage, then adjust the RPM at which the shift will occur. Click again to back out. When you're finished, rotate the knob until the X in the corner is highlighted and click to exit. Firmness adjustment works the same as shift points except that you are adjusting the percentage of firmness for each shift. The next option under the Tune menu is Torque Converter Clutch, allowing you to make adjustments to aspects of the TCC. This includes cruise gear, minimum RPM, and wide open throttle gear. After clicking one of the items, you'll see a screen where you can change the value. Click again to return to the previous menu. The next section in the main menu is Diagnostics and the first option in the list is Dyno Mode. This allows changing gears using the controller knob and engaging TCC lock during a dyno run. Please note that it is not safe to use this mode while driving. While in dyno mode, the display will mimic the home screen. Push the knob for dyno mode menu. In this menu, you can manually lock and unlock the TCC. Click exit to leave dyno mode. The next option under diagnostics is clear learn. The specific options will differ depending on the controller. This menu will allow you to choose which learn data to erase, which is useful after making changes to the vehicle so that the data can be relearned. Clicking one of the items will bring up a confirmation and clicking yes will erase the data. 
The next option under the Diagnostics menu is System Info. This is where you would look to see which firmware version you have. Override is used to diagnose line pressure issues. You should only use this option if instructed to do so by one of our technicians. On Quick 6, there will also be a Clutch Learn option. This is another option that should never be used unless one of our technicians asks you to do so. Going back to the main menu, the next option is Table Select, which is also omitted on Quick 2. Here you can choose to select table based on a switch, activated by grounding the purple wire of the vehicle harness. Alternatively, the way the switch works can be configured in Shiftware. If not using a switch, simply choose your table from this menu. The last option in the main menu is Tutorial, which will play an automated demo detailing the user interface. Turning the knob and clicking Home Screen will end the tutorial. This concludes the walkthrough of the Gen 2 graphical display. To stay up to date as new videos are released, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find out more about all of our products by visiting our website at usshift.com.